forecast first. Good morning, Western Slope. Thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations, you have made it to Friday. We are looking at some very uh, clearer conditions outside on our America's Mattress live tower camera. In fact, just a little bit of some clouds out into the distance over Mount Garfield. Some of you are looking at some wispy clouds going through the area. But we're really not looking at very much as far as precipitation goes for this morning. We'll just see a little bit of some cloudy skies, uh, partly cloudy skies that is, going through the atmosphere as you start your morning. And the other thing that's going to happen with those clouds is we're also going to see our current temperatures into the 60s and 50s for this morning. 60 in the Grand Junction, 55 degrees into Montrose, and our higher elevations, you're into the 40s for this morning. We're going to warm up back into those 80s. 80 and 70 degree temperatures for today, but we still have another chance of some storms to work with. All of the details on all of that coming up. Senate Democrats want the leader of the Bureau of Land Management to have his power revoked. Decisions by the acting director about how to run the agency are being questioned by Senate Democrats, including Colorado Senator Michael Bennett. Bennett and 11 others sent a letter to the Secretary of the Interior, David Bernhardt, asking him to terminate William Perry Pendley's authority as acting director of the BLM. The senator's concerns with Pendley include the widespread sale of public lands, his efforts to roll back key conservation laws, and his disregard for the role that the BLM plays in managing public lands. Marijuana has been green gold for Colorado, bringing in more than $6 billion in revenue. And soon the industry could see even more money. 33 states have legalized either medicinal or recreational marijuana, but the federal prohibition has made it difficult for businesses to get bank accounts, loans, and other financial services. Well, now marijuana businesses could finally have access to banking after the House of Representatives passed the Safe Banking Act on Wednesday. The bill passed on a 321 to 103 vote, and while there's still some uncertainty as to how it will fare in the Senate, supporters seem optimistic. Rick Salinger has more. Amy Sampson has what she considers excellent employment. She's assistant manager at the Lit Dispensary near Mile High Stadium. But since marijuana remains illegal under federal law, when she went to get an auto loan, she was turned down repeatedly. I had to call eight different banks just to get a loan for my car, even having, you know, a good, stable, stable job that I've been in for two years. The legal marijuana business in Colorado is cash only. But now, the U.S. House has passed the bill to allow banks to deal with pot-related companies, only in states that have made it legal. Bruce Nassau is the owner of this dispensary and had suggested the bill. Sitting on all kinds of cash is extremely dangerous, particularly when you include cannabis uh, in the scenario as well. Marijuana businesses employ heavily armed security firms to move around that cash. Most notable was the 2016 murder of Travis Mason while working as a security guard at an Aurora dispensary. There is now a $50,000 reward. But banks remain reluctant to deal with the pot business until when and if the bill becomes law. We could all be arrested. Um, it's not federally legal, so they just don't want to play with the legality of even, you know, like having my name on... Uh, like a loan with their bank or anything like that. The House is banking on pot. Next comes the U.S. Senate. The El Paso County Sheriff's Office is working alongside officials with School District 49 after a student reportedly brought a gun to school. The incident happened Thursday morning at Falcon Elementary School, and a letter to parents was posted on the school's website detailing the events that led to the discovery of the weapon. It says at the start of the school day, a first grader showed a staff member a single round. School administrators were notified and they contacted the El Paso County Sheriff's Office as well as D49 Safety and Security. The child was removed from class and a search of the student's backpack revealed a handgun. I don't think anything shocks me anymore. Why did the child bring it? And then the second question is, is what are the teachers doing to you know, keep a better eye on the kids? The student told administrators he did not want to hurt anyone, and the school says they don't believe that the student intended to threaten or harm any students or staff. However, they say the El Paso County Sheriff's Office will conduct a thorough investigation into how the student obtained the handgun, while administrators will decide what's next for that student. As we hear more about the dangers associated with vaping devices and how they can cause health issues in people, 
Well, now some veterinarians are saying pets can get sick, too. Jacqueline Quinn spoke with some experts in Denver and joins us now to explain the research. I'm holding this little vial of eye droplets here, and you can see not a lot of fluid in here. It says 15 milliliters, but just some of this, if it's ingested by a small dog, could uh, be very toxic, if not deadly. Now, you probably have seen some of these posts online on social media about pets getting into vaping liquids and making them sick. So we checked around with local veterinarians, and they tell us they have been seeing some cases. Now, most of the time, they tell us uh, dogs come in and they're just very sick, but it just doesn't take a a lot to potentially threaten uh, the lives of pets if they have ingested some of these uh, liquids. One veterinarian at Royal Vista Veterinary says he has seen cases recently and tells us pets are attracted to the flavors available with these new vaping liquids. So these vaping products are flavored so that we like them, but also those scents will attract our pets, dogs, cats, birds, all sorts of pets that you don't think about. Um, and the problem is not necessarily with the liquid and the components there itself, but it's the nicotine component and, and the active ingredient that's in there that can really cause a, a toxic issue. And Dr. Zach Wells says that if you think your pet has ingested some of this uh, vaping liquid, he says to go ahead and get them checked out as soon as possible. In the newsroom, I'm Jacqueline Quinn covering Colorado First. The governor's office makes a strange request to a couple of local newspapers. Governor Jared Polis is drawing criticism for asking two conservative newspapers to remove a story from their websites. His staff asked the Kiowa County Press and the Chronicle News to unpublish a story that was originally reported by the Center Square. The governor's office says they believe that the Center Square is a biased news organization funded by groups affiliated with the conservative Koch family. Advocates for the freedom of the press have expressed concern with the governor's unusual request and the executive editor of the Center Square says the Pulse administration doesn't return his reporters' emails or phone calls and has never asked for a correction of the original article. And the FBI is looking into online posts by extremists about the new movie Joker amid warnings over potential shootings at film screenings. Warner Brothers says the movie, which is set for release next week, does not endorse violence, yet police in Aurora say Joker will not be shown at the theater where 12 people died in a mass shooting in 2012. Barry Peterson was at a memorial for those victims in Aurora, and he brings us more. Can you bring me out? Can you introduce me as Joker? Joker is expected to be one of Hollywood's biggest blockbusters of the year, reportedly set to break records for an October release in the U.S. But CBS News has learned authorities are concerned about the movie, possibly inspiring someone to commit a mass shooting. Everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. The Joker, played by Joaquin Phoenix, is portrayed as a sympathetic protagonist dealing with internal, emotional struggles, who then turns to violence. Phoenix believes it is not the responsibility of the filmmaker to teach the audience morality. If you have somebody that has that level of emotional disturbance, um, I think that they can find um, fuel anywhere. In an alert sent by the military, which contained intelligence from the FBI, an army base in Texas encouraged people to identify two escape routes in theaters and run, hide, fight if in an active shooting situation. The alert was apparently related to extremists classified as incels, a group whose members define themselves as being unable to find sexual partners and whose members have, on occasion, resorted to excessive violence. We're all dealing, including our whole family, with PTSD. Tina Marie Kuhn's son Tanner was in the Aurora, Colorado theater during one of the deadliest mass shootings in U.S. history. Twelve people were killed, 70 more injured, at a midnight showing of another Batman movie, The Dark Knight Rises, seven years ago. Kuhn joined several relatives of the victims expressing their concern in a letter to the film's distributor, Warner Brothers, to take a number of steps to reduce gun violence. Among them, ending political contributions to candidates who take money from the NRA and giving money to survivor funds and gun violence intervention programs. Are you concerned that a movie like this could trigger someone else to do what happened in Aurora? Oh, absolutely. Kuhn says it's possible someone could view the Joker through a personal lens. I think it's sad that people react to a fake story and make it real. 
The controversy and the concern could have some unintended consequences. It might spark curiosity about the movie, and that could drive more people to go see it. Barry Peterson, CBS News, Aurora, Colorado. Well, we're looking at not very much as far as cloud cover goes for this morning. In fact, just a little bit of some clouds moving through the atmosphere, but that's actually going to change. We're going to see another round of some storms later on. I'll have the details on what that's going to look like for your Friday as well as for your weekend coming up in my full forecast. But for now, let's take one last look at our pollen forecast for this morning, brought to us by Allergy and Asthma Center of Western Colorado. We'll be right back.